Welcome back to the Joe Mack Podcast. I have a very special guest. He's an L.A.-based award-winning actor. Uh, I've worked with him on a couple projects. We've met briefly. This is the first time we're actually going to get an opportunity to you know, have a, have a conversation. And uh, I'm really looking forward to it. Merrick McCartha, thank you so much for joining me, sir. Absolutely. Good to see you, Joe. How's your day going? It's, uh, it's going well as can be with uh, all things considered. It's going well as can be. Now, uh, congratulations. We spoke briefly. Uh, you told me that you had a couple, couple gigs booked, couple, couple, um, couple roles. Do we want to start there? Or do we want to start with your your backstory? Um, we can. I can go into the the roles. I'll, I'll do do a quick thing on me, where I'm from, so people that on your podcast you don't really know uh, who I am. I um, actor working in Los Angeles. Um, Many people uh, think I started in San Diego, but actually, uh, I'm from Detroit, Michigan. I actually had my first uh, experience with acting in Detroit, Michigan, um, and I was not an aspiring actor in Detroit, Michigan at all. <laughs> so uh, that's different. I went to uh, uh, a very uh, tech. It's called Cast Tech High School. So it was a um, one of the schools that you have to test to get into and. It was like an overachiever high school, pretty much. Uh, and I was actually geared towards being an engineer uh, for years, starting in high school. You know, uh, I had some, some uh, sense of you know, enjoying the, uh, performing when I was in elementary school. When I got into you know, junior high school, I did a couple of uh, summer uh, camps where we did some theater stuff. That was really fun. And then in high school, what some people don't know is I actually was in a teen theater troupe. Uh, out of my high school. I'm not sure how I got connected with this uh, group, but I, we would tour uh, around Detroit um, doing theater performances, little skits for uh, younger kids in like elementary school and junior high about, you know, positive messaging, you know, having confidence in yourself, uh, staying away from bad things like drugs and how to have, be um, careful when having sex and things. It was all this stuff that you know, they don't really like it to teach too much. <laughs> but we, we, we did this and it was, um, it was great. It was a really fun experience being part of that. Uh, I felt I was really doing something with acting to help people, which is great. Um, people that were in that group I'm still friends with, um, Kiami, uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> Quanos Mitchell and uh, uh, Marlon Bailey are still really good friends uh, that we keep in touch with. And um, there I, I, I moved to uh, San Diego to go to UC San Diego for engineering. Uh, and uh, I, I was an engineering student. I became an engineer. was an engineer for years, actually. Uh, didn't really mess around too much with acting. Uh, even though San Diego was sort of a, at the time, they were producing some TV shows in San Diego. I didn't really do too much of that. Um, but it wasn't too much later after I made the big change to go into looking at acting as a, as a full-time thing. And uh, so I, I'm one of the people that started later in life is what I'm trying to get to. Uh, there are a lot of actors that start when they're, you know, they're 20, they're fresh out of college or you know, some out of, out of high school and younger that are starting to pursue acting. I didn't, I didn't start till much, much later in life. And I think that what a lot of uh, people think is that, you know, you can't do it when you're much older in life when you're over 40 you know and that's not true you actually can there's actually a strong market of people that are older uh, that want to start out and as long as you put in the work and uh, you're try to minimize any time wasters as far as the wrong path to go down when you're pursuing the career you can be successful as an actor uh, over the age of 40 and so uh, I I, I, too, I made a lot of mistakes. <laughs> uh, and, and again, the industry changes all the time. So there's certain things I couldn't know. Um, but there are also things that just weren't, uh, you know, they, I, I didn't have access to finding the information. I didn't have a way to, I didn't know how to find the right information to help me. And uh, there's, you know, one guy who I knew uh, years back. His name is Kim Estes. He's actually an Emmy winning actor in LA now, we're actually good friends here in LA, and he was one of the people that kind of gave me some pointers about how things work in LA and things like that, and also Cammie Carpenter, who's in uh, San Diego, kind of uh, really kind of helped me when I knew nothing, 
And she's I, I came to her and I had a a uh, a personal photo of me that was really cropped out of just me. And I'm like, here's my headshot. And she's like, mm, no, you don't have. <laughs> so she really helped me put things together from there. And I got an agent in San Diego and I did my first uh, commercial work in San Diego. Um, one of the first big campaigns was for Cox Communications. And I was uh, hired um, by Tony Lovett, who's also a good friend, still in San Diego. And uh, we've got some fun stories about <laughs> working together. And then I went on to do a uh, well, Pacific Marine Credit Union uh, commercial series in San Diego also. Um, and just got to know, you know the environment in San Diego as well. But from there, I, I, I moved to transition to L.A. a few years back, and that's been a, that's been a winning move for me also. Wow. Thank you for that. So, I mean, just to kind of recap a little bit, you actually are originally from Detroit, Michigan. Uh, you began your acting essentially in uh, a theater capacity as part of a troupe on tour uh and which which uh which kind of you saw it as spreading a positive message and helping people so it sounds like it's kind of it was kind of a twofold you got to kind of be expressive and help people at the same time it sounds like that's kind of the what you got out of it early on is that am i correct in that yeah i think yeah and i think that kind of hits at a lot of things uh a lot, one of the main reasons for real committed actors to do what we do is that it's not just for us to be able to express ourselves, but it's something that we can impact someone's life in a positive way, or at least an insightful way, in some, in, somehow. That, that's one of the main draws that keeps me very passionate about this. Very good, thank you. And then, so you moved to UC San Diego to pursue engineering. Is that something that you always wanted to do or envisioned yourself doing? Is that kind of like... Yeah, I was, I, was a, I was a big, big time nerd when I was really young. So from, you know, junior high, I was the guy that was in the, you know, what they call the gifted tech, uh, and talented classes with all the nerds were in the class. And, uh, you know, I made the decision early. I was in the electronics curriculum in high school. I mean, it was pretty intense, pretty serious about... <laughs> about where I was going to be. And, you know, I grew up in a family. My, my parents were uh, Detroit police officers. They're middle class. Um, they, they raised themselves out of projects in Detroit and became this upstanding middle class family. And I was, you know, how it is when you're younger, your parents are usually like, you need to become a doctor or a lawyer, you know. This was, for me, it was engineering. They were like, you're, you're going to be, you're going to be in one of these high salary working jobs in a corporation. And that's kind of the, the road I just, I, I, I set for myself, I didn't really question it at the time as to why, it, whether or not it was the right thing for me to do. Wow. So, after, so at what point did you decide? And it, so you you graduated from UC San Diego, and then you began your career in engineering. Mm -hmm. And you said you did that for several years. Yeah, yeah, almost okay. almost ten years in engineer, and then I just had um, a lot of major things that happened in my life that changed the way I looked at. Um, what life is really about, I guess, you know, um, and I, although I love engineering, I love math, solving problems, being in a lab, I knew that that wasn't really, uh, that was what I wanted to do with the rest of my life. And I, I, uh, my mother had always wanted me to go in acting and I, I, uh, didn't really take it that seriously because I didn't know if it would be something that I could pursue and for it to actually be lucrative. It seemed like a long shot, but uh, I decided, no, that's, uh, I made up my mind that when you work hard, when you go for something, anything's possible. And I didn't let myself get discouraged. I was persistent. I was uh, uh, dedicated to learning, to pursuing and uh, building. And there, I got to a point where I was started to get some uh, auditions in Los Angeles from San Diego. And I was driving up to L.A., for auditions and back like same day you know three hour each way or six hour round trip oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah wow i didn't well i didn't mean to cut you off i'm just no it's all right because i know to drive i mean i spend half my time in los angeles myself so yeah yeah i get it no i get it uh wow so look a, a couple things um 
dedicated to learning, pursuing, and building. That sounds like uh, sounds like keys to success. Yeah, I, I think with most things, you know, you got to start with the foundation of, uh, of learning. And I went to and studied with some really wonderful acting teachers in San Diego and in Los Angeles. Okay, and I still do. I still take uh, classes. Right now, I am a student of uh, Gregory Burke Sobeck, uh, who's who's a, uh, a Yale professor who does classes in, in Los Angeles. And uh, yeah, still so always do that. Um, then you've got to really realize that this is a competitive business. You really got to go for it. You got to be persistent and, and go after it. You can't think that you're just going to put out some headshots of yourself and think people are going to come calling for you. That is absolutely not <laughs> how the business works. You've got to really work at, work at it. Is, is that, is that uh, I mean, you know, for people that, well, I mean, you know, the, the current times are going to kind of dictate how we, how our industry uh, evolves moving forward. Um, but is that something essentially everybody has to learn that, hey, look, I'm not that special at some point within this industry, do you think? Or do you think some people just, hey, they just, they just kind of, yeah. I, I, I think uh, it's a mix. I mean, um there's still people that have the idea they can, they're going to move to uh, Los Angeles from Idaho, and then within uh, a month they're going to be on a TV show. Yeah, and uh, that's generally not how it ever happens to you. Um, it, it, there have to be really special circumstances for that to happen. Um, so, yeah, I, I think you really got to make sure that you're managing your expectations when you come into the business. Understand it's going to take time. And you've got to build relationships. That's the build. Build your relationships, build your credits. And that is how you uh, achieve lasting, consistent success, is building your, building your relationships and building on your work. Wow. Perfect. And then you said uh, one of the major considerations was going from engineering to pursuing this lifestyle was uh, it being lucrative or not. How did you how did you uh, negotiate that decision? Uh, poorly. <laughs> I uh, I uh, I did. That was one of the major uh, naive points of my approach was that I think you know I wasn't going to suffer too bad financially by pursuing this, and I did. Um, going from making you know at the time over a hundred grand a year as an engineer to making almost nothing. Uh, that's with pursuing acting and doing a little side jobs. Uh, that was something that I I underestimated <laughs> <laughs> the difficulty <laughs> of dealing with that for a number of years. For a number. So of I think years. yeah, a number of years. I mean, I think actors when you realize, when you come into this, and you want to pursue this, you don't really want to do anything else. Then you got to realize that you're going to be kind of broke for a couple of years if you're just committed to this. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of friends that have a regular job and they want to pursue acting sort of on the side and that's great but you have to manage your expectations again and understand that mm -hmm. you will likely have a lower rate of success by doing that. Mm -hmm. You've got to be all in and commit to this to really kind of push forward. Mm. Wow. 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 That's uh, really... Yeah. So 100K as an engineer to zero. <laughs> Pretty much. Much, yeah. And Pretty much, and my fr my friends in San Diego are well aware of that transition <laughs> of Merrick being kind of broke for a while. So yeah. Yeah, and then you said it took a number of years to kind of, you know, kind of uh, kind of adjust to that. Yeah. Well, it, yeah. I want to say adjust. It was just um, a number of years of getting through it because. It, it you it it starts out that way, but it gets better and better every year. The more persistent you are, the harder you work. You're going to see more jobs from the work, and it'll get more and more consistent and less and less difficult. And uh, yeah, it, it 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 takes it just takes some time to build out of that, where it's almost ab abject poverty to where you're living a decent life, where you can actually do stuff like travel to the movies, you know, <laughs> something like that. How do you see the industry 
moving forward from this point in time? Well, that's a good point. So I think we, we brought up earlier at the beginning that I have, was on um, book for a couple of projects. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Um, <clears throat> so this is right before the uh, COVID-19 started, and I, I had already booked some things that were just in this pipeline of being aired on television. There was uh, an episode of the show All American. Um, there was This Is Us just prior to that. And then there was uh, an episode of Brooklyn Nine-Nine. And then an episode of Broke, and I was, and so I was all set to film a couple episodes of uh, another show, which uh, I guess I can say it's a, sort of a, a uh, reboot of uh, Saved by the Bell. Okay. And uh, then there is a, another a project called The Shop by uh, that's on Vet TV, and it's this great show that it's it's kind of in the vein of The Office, but for military. Wow. Um, but wow. it is just, and it, these are serious military, military veterans, and, and it is the language, the, just like you and me may have worked in a, a corporate office environment, we can relate to the office, the military will relate to what happens <laughs> on the shop, very, very much so. And they're, they're a great crew to work with, um, they work out of uh, 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 Riverside, and okay. it is... Uh, it's, you know, mil the uniforms are all accurate, they're all hardcore, being very specific, very accurate with the, the uh, representations of the military. And uh, my role is a uh, uh, major, I think it's, it's an officer, but it's, no, I think it's a sergeant major, I, I for, I'm forgetting the actual uh, character name. We did a couple episodes, and then we had to stop filming that, because we were starting to shoot because of the, the stay-at-home order. Okay. So that's on hold. Um, there was another job in San Diego that was set to shoot, I think this month, that was, it's been put on hold. Um, and then there's other things that were not coming up for me as well. But all that stopped, so there's been no, uh, no in-person auditions at all, and very, very few uh, self-tape auditions for work. So, did you know that a lot of the casting people are, some of them anyway, are doing the things where you can submit a self tape to them just because so they, so they can see your work i've seen that i've seen that on the actors access page i've been i've been doing it and uh it's it's a good skill to develop you know because you know hey have you done one? Oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah good oh yeah oh yeah 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 did you do a monologue or did you do a scene i did a monologue i did a commercial and then i did uh i do you know some basic introductions as well and Sometimes I'll just go in, you know, put, put, you know, tailor a message directly for that, um, for that person. Because I mean, uh -huh. hey, look, I mean, we have the capabilities to do it. Why not? Why not just do okay. it? You know, we can cut through all the mustard. You know, so sometimes it works, sometimes you know it doesn't. But hey, you know. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, um, so you've done a couple of those, uh, and they're for the LA casting people mainly, or? Yeah. Um, well. Yeah, so I'm on, yeah, so for Actors Access, uh, let me see, because I was on NCIS LA last year. Oh, nice. Nice. Uh, and I know that they're opening, they're, 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 the, they're one that's taking uh, self-submitting tapes at the moment uh, through the 30th of this month, I believe. Um, uh, well, yeah, um, Susan Bluestein and Jason Kennedy, who I actually booked an episode of NCIS uh, myself, and I read for NCIS uh, many times. I'll tell you about that in a second. But yeah, they're doing a, uh, they actually extended it. It was supposed to go till April 30th. Okay. And then they extended it to this coming Monday, I think, or something like that. This month, okay. okay. This this okay. Monday, the uh, May the 4th, um, okay. which would, so um, just keep that in mind. But yeah, they're great. There's several other people that are, are doing it. But NCIS is one of those, great example of persistence is, uh, in say yes, I went in to read for Jason Kennedy. Um, I, this is after I got an agent. I get called in. I was reading for a co-star role for In say yes. and I read did one read through, and he stopped. And he goes, "Huh? Can you can you give me a second? And he pulled out this other sheet. He's like, "Can you can you take this uh, five minutes and then read this for me?" And it was like for a guest star role. And I was like, "Wow, that was that was where it's like you know what? You know, from, coming from someone Jason Kennedy who sees actors all the time." That that another reinforcement that yes I'm in the right place I'm doing the right thing I'm I'm this is the path I should be on, and so 
Uh, I read for that guest star. I didn't book that guest star. Uh, and, but I did get called back in for NCIS multiple times and always a guest star or above for the show from that point on. So I was always there and um, they, how they started doing them was you'd go into NCIS to audition and uh, you walk in and there's like a room full of people in this tiny, <laughs> like tiny you know, room. You got like eight people sitting there watching you and it's, it's the casting director, Jason, and someone working the camera and Susan uh, Bluestein is there also and you got the director and uh, the writer and, and maybe a network producer is there. Um, and so when you don't know this going the first time, you kind of walk in and go, whoa, <laughs> but that's, that, that would really typically be called a, uh, a, uh, a producer read. Um, it's, it's basically you, you, it's a callback in TV where you go to the callback and usually the producer and director is there for that. Um, but NCS is one of the shows that where they do that for, at least the guest stars, uh, they do that for every, every audition, the first audition. And I think they kind of want to make it more efficient by having you do that in front of everyone right then the first time so that when you get picked for this job, they've all seen you. There's no secondary process for them. I think. I think. So you, you, so you are in NCIS LA, correct? Yes. And that is yeah, with... Uh, actually, so it's funny. I, it's funny. I actually played a theater. Uh, so I wore the flight suit the whole nine yards. And... Um, I actually, my, my background is I, I'm prior service military. I served five years in the Marine Corps, uh, yeah. which is also funny because I got to go back to the shop. You said that you you guys started filming for that. Yeah. Very yeah. familiar with Vet TV. I'm very familiar with Donnie O'Malley. He's actually a prior service uh, Marine Corps infantry officer. Wow. Wow. So, wow. yeah, and he's, he's the guy that he's like the CEO. He's like the head of Vet TV. Um, so yeah. like what you were saying about the uniforms being on point, uh, yeah, I mean, all that production, it's very close attention to detail. And I saw the same thing on NCIS as well. You know, it was pretty, pretty darn, uh, close to reality. Yeah. 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 That's good. It's good that you, uh, good that you got in that office. It's a great office to be in. Great. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I'm glad, I'm glad you gave me some input on that because that kind of helps me out, um, kind of gives me a, a kind of a broader view, kind of how you um, got some opportunities there. What else, What you know, what other takeaways, what other things uh, could, could we put out there for the, um, for the audience? Um, I would say um, just me, for one, realize that you want to have the right mindset and, for this. Um, that it's a serious job. It's not something you can play at and, and think you're going to be successful. Um, and even though you see a lot of stories about people that come from out of nowhere that are overnight successes, um, for one, I think it almost never, ever, ever happens that way that they portray it. Uh, so even if you've never seen an actor before and all of a sudden they're on in a Steven Spielberg movie, I can pretty much guarantee they've done something else that's significant <laughs> that you just didn't see that Spielberg saw and that's why he brought you in the national spotlight or you know uh, David Finch you know the, even these great directors you've, you're not an overnight success you just have worked up to where now you're in the national spotlight um, other I uh, and, and kids generally will have that <clears throat> happen to them really young kids though like the kids from Stranger Things you know most of them you haven't seen Ever before, and they was they did a national uh, open call for those roles, <clears throat> and they found kids. Uh, but generally, uh, things are not done on an open call basis. They want to know that you can conduct yourself in an audition room, that you can conduct yourself on set, that you actually have the training and skill to do the job, um, that you're reliable. I and mean, these are things that they need to know before. So make sure that you. Yes, you had a question. Build on all of the, I mean, that's, I'm, I'm glad you said all those things, but before I forget, just to, to build on that, when you, it, it sounds like it goes back to what you said earlier about building and maintaining relationships. Yes. Do you have a set way that you maintain that, those relationships? Let's say, look, you, uh, like you said, NCIS, Jason Kennedy, uh, do you shoot an email every once in a while do you shoot a message i mean how do you is it different for every person how do you negotiate that how do you maintain those relationships 
and follow up effectively. Yeah, that's another good point. I think a lot of new actors don't understand how things work. Um, being in contact or making these connections or maintaining these connections, there are certain protocols that you want to follow so that you're not seen as someone who is unprofessional. Um, so I'll start with agents for one. Um, uh, people want to reach out to agents and they want to get representation. And uh, I think that people think they need to have some novel way to grab their attention with some gimmick. And that's not how you get a good agent's attention. They want to see, for one, that you are someone they need on their roster, that you have the skills and resume that is commensurate with what their other talent has, um, or that you have something that was high, you know, super valuable on the market right now that they may need plenty of. Um, so realize that your gimmicks aren't going to work. Be, learn what the real format for a uh, submission uh, letter is for, uh, for uh, talent representation. Um, and once you do get to an audition room and meet a casting person, um, be, again, being professional, you're not trying to get to know them personally. That's really unprofessional. <laughs> you're there to show them. They have a, when they called you in the audition room, they're there, they're doing a job. Your job is to show them that you're the person to fit the job they need, uh, the actor that they need. And then that's it. You leave. Um, now, when you get an audition, a lot of times you, you have the casting director's information. You might even have their email. Never, ever, ever email a casting person unsolicited unless it is some major issue that you really need to because they're already busy and it, it is a real big faux pas to, to directly email a casting person as an actor just for, hey, just keep it in touch with you. Yeah, that's, that's not really going to really go well, I think. No, no, unless you've met them in person, have that personal yeah. relationship, but met them on the street and they know you. Hey, you know, Bob, I, I want to make sure you know I'm available if you need people for this role, you're casting, that's, that's okay, but not someone that you just went in to read for once and then you want to, you know, reapproach them on an email. Um, so no emails like that, no in, trying to get to know them at the audition. Um, uh, what can you do? You can. Uh, sometimes they will have, a, during this time, a lot of them are doing uh, Zoom classes where they will basically have sort of a workshop for you to kind of go on. You can do scenes with them and they can give you some feedback. That's some of the things that's happening out there. Um, yeah. I don't know if they're in the offices now to get postcards, but I have been a fan of postcards only when, but with the caveat that you really need to use postcards wisely. There's a way to use them and there's a way that it's a total waste of your time and their time. So, um, wow. okay. yeah, use postcards. If you, if you got an audition with the casting person, it is, appropriate, it is appropriate for you to send them a postcard saying, hey, thanks for calling me in for so-and-so last week. I really appreciate it. Hope to see you again soon. Something like that. Something simple. Um, just to kind of keep you in their minds, that's okay. Um, what I've done is uh, at the end of the year or the beginning of the year, I will send out postcards to all the casting people I went in to read for the prior year. That's kind of my big blast. It's, my thought is it's the beginning of the year. Things are starting back up for the season, for pilot season. So I'm saying, hey, remember you called me in, you liked what I did. I might not have booked it or I did, whatever happens, but just let, let you know, I really appreciate it. And that's it. You're not trying to come off as someone who's begging them to put you in their next project. You just want to say, hey, I'm here. I appreciate you. By the way, remember I do good work, that kind of thing. That's, that's all you're really saying. Um, wow. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. What have you done? Have you tried to reach out or? Well, all the mistakes that you said, don't do. I've, I've made all those mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> um, I mean, I've been at this for over 10 years. You know, I yeah. actually started on the East Coast. I've been in Southern California for over six years now. And yeah, uh, yeah so I mean, trial. I'm, I'm the type of person. I'm, I'm uh, definitely a trial and error basis type of person. Sounds like you're the same way. Yeah. Well, only because I didn't know. I mean, I had some guidance, some help when I could, but you know, I, I didn't know. And I, I like there's a, in San Diego, I took a class by Candace Paul, uh, who's a casting person down there who taught me a lot about the process of auditioning and what to do, what not to do and things to consider. And that really helped me in LA. Like I, they don't, I learned things in her class that I never once learned in, in LA at all. So yeah. 
Okay, got you. And just, I mean, look, just to recap, I mean, you shared a lot of things. Uh, uh, so we don't want to use gimmicks. We want to build value in ourselves and the skills that we are able to bring to the table to that production. Um, so we want to tailor the uh, we want to tailor our presentation to the role that they're that you're auditioning for in the correct format, right? Um, and be professional. Yeah. Be professional about it. Sounds like. And um, I think yeah. I mean. So as far as that goes, I've you know I've got all that down. Something I'm going to take a page out of your book is for sure uh, utilizing postcards. Um, that sounds uh, first of the year. I mean that sounds like a, a great idea. Um, yeah. uh, you know, and also some actors will send the if you book the job. Some actors will send the casting office a little gift. It could be a treat or something to as a gift as a thank you. That's also appreciated and, and acceptable as well. A little. You know, you're not sending, you know, uh, gold-plated whatever. Just something that's <laughs> nice. Um, and also, getting back to uh, gimmicks. So, there is this long-running story in L.A. with L.A. agents about uh, this actor that supposedly um, an agent, he said he got a package in the, in the uh, mail for the, in the office. And it's a box. He opens up, and it's what looked to be a foot. And he freaked out. He didn't really... Can't ever find out if it was real or not, but there was a note in it, and it was a note from an actor that said, "Hey, just trying to get my foot in the door. Ha ha. <laughs> Please consider me for representation." It was like one of those, and uh, he called a couple of other agent friends of his, and they, a few of them, had gotten the same thing. This gimmick of a foot, a plastic foot, mailed to them saying, "I just want to get my foot in the door," and uh, that was one of the funniest and longest folk tales in LA about the worst thing you could possibly do as an actor trying to get representation is, <laughs> you know, as far as gimmicks. So this is what I mean by stay away from getting nothing crazy. You don't, you know, you don't want to scare the people that you're trying to get to represent you or see you. Wow. Yeah. So it's good to know that. Thank you for that. <laughs> That's not a mistake you've made though, right? You haven't done No, not yet. I'm, I was, th I, 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 you know, thank you for deterring me from, uh, from something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it sounds like there's a fine line between creativity and gimmick. Yeah. Uh, uh, kind of, you know, we got to kind of find that line and kind of, well, hey, look, I mean, you are, I mean, a lot of people will consider you a success story because essentially, I mean, just to backtrack, you walked in the door with a, uh, a piece of, a blank piece of paper and a, a picture of you and somebody else cropped out and that was your headshot. And that was less than 10 years ago. And if I Google Merrick MacArthur, if I go on IMDb, if I go on YouTube, if I turn on the TV, you know, I'm seeing your face everywhere pretty much. I mean, what is that? So that being said, where does Merrick MacArthur go from here? What is the ideal opportunity for Merrick MacArthur? And uh, what is... Is there a certain is there is there a certain vision that you have of a place that you're that you want to be that you're trying to reach or are you already there? Are you already there? Uh, not quite there yet. So the next major milestone for me is to land a series regular role, and this is the goal for many many actors in film and television. A series regular on television. For me, uh, it, it opens you up to, um, for one, a lot more income. <laughs> you make a lot as a series regular, you're doing 13 episodes, and you made a lot of money. It's a good series. It continues, then, yes, you're doing quite well for yourself as an actor. You only work about, I think it's, uh, it might actually be like 13 weeks out of the year. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah? And you only for for that show for that show, and then and and uh, so you got now you got your income set you got you're consistently working you have this chance to do great work uh, on a weekly weekly daily basis that can come out for people to see every week um, you're being paid well so now you have sort of this foundation of um, 
uh, I want to say a fan base uh, okay. if it's a good show and if you got a good character and uh, even if that show eventually stops airing or they cancel it after a couple seasons you're now in that echelon of actors that are series regulars so the next series that, and there's so many coming out now you're in that echelon of people that is a series regular actor that has done series regular work before and that gives you a lot I think of uh, a, a force in the market as far as you know getting other work uh, for yourself I've seen a lot of actors that their series regular on a show that was sort of okay, but they were on it for a couple of years, and they've gone on after that. They do another show as a series regular, a couple of years. Yeah. After that, another show. And then they hit one that does the 10-year, whatever, the eight-year uh, mega-hit shows, and, and, and that's it. But then now you're, you, depending on how your contract is set up, maybe you can look into doing um, movies, uh, major, major studio movies. And because you're a series regular actor now, you probably have the income to where you can produce your own independent movie and show it at Sundance or show it at uh, Cannes Film Festival. I mean, these are these are the the opportunities that open up to you when you become a series regular actor. Wow. For me, that's what I would look, look at. Um, people, yeah. I mean, people say, "Yeah, I want to be a movie star." I'm like, "Yes, sure, I want to be a movie star." But I think about in terms of work. I mean. The great movie stars out there, they work maybe once every couple of years on something. You know, and it's good for them, they're making millions of dollars. They can afford to not have to work for a while. But, and they, you know, I'm sure they go on and do lots and lots of theater in between. Um, so that's a great ideal, but I think for me, my next step is going to be for series regular. Um, wow. And you know, whether I ever become a movie star after that, I, I may not care. Again, I have, I'll have a lot of other things I can do with that series regular status, as far as the income, with me making my own projects, or um, you know, me opening myself up to do other things, or simply me being able to consistently work as a series regular with other shows, I'm sure I think. Mm -hmm. Well, it sounds to me like you're the type of person, whether it's a series regular, whether it's a, a major motion picture, or whether it's Pacific Marine Credit Union or Honda of you know, it sounds like you, or whether it's a you know, your troop tour back in your teen years. Uh, it sounds like, I mean, it sounds like you approach it the same way as in, you know, this is um, an opportunity for me to kind of help people. Essentially. Yeah. I, yeah. I try to make sure that I'm there to help other actors that are trying with some, you know, I actors, a. Uh, approach me that are new and are trying to get representation. I know how that is. I know the feeling and I have to explain to them, well, to get a representation, you have to have at least one network credit on your resume and most agents won't even look at you. And they say, well, okay, so how do I get that network credit? Well, you have to have an agent that submitted you for a network job. Wait a minute, I have, an, I have to have an agent to get a job to get the credit for me to be able to sign with an agent and I said, yeah, this is weird catch-22 that <laughs> you're in. So you got to figure out, you have to figure out a way around that. Um, and there are ways to, to, to get around that, that catch-22. Now, um, is, is I, I'm sorry, is, uh, real quick, just before I forget, is, you said, you know, series regular, uh, series regular role. Are we, we're talking yeah. now, is that, is that, does that have this, aside from the money, does that have the same prestige that it used to have? Or does it have more or less nowadays? Um, I think it does. I think it uh, has at least the same or, or more because you see so many actors that would only do film for years and years now going, going to do television because it's consistent work and they like doing the work and they like the project. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, not a, it's not a small thing to be a series regular actor. Um, I, you know, there, yeah, I, I don't think there's a I don't think there's any, uh, any kind of negative connotation about being a series regular actor at all. Okay, gotcha. Well, well I mean, the reason I'm, I'm bringing that up is just I'm thinking, okay, there, you, you know, uh, the shop, the Vet TV web series, right? <laughs> Ten years ago, that wasn't real, a web series. Okay, you know, great. But, you know, now that has the potential to be picked up by Netflix, to be picked up by, you know, so... It sounds like it could, you know, it sounds like whether you're serious, you know, it sounds like it could, you could really find big success anywhere nowadays, potentially. 
That's a good point. There's a lot of uh, opportunity out there for projects with the streaming networks, with uh, you know the, the the HBO Max and the, and the uh, the Netflix uh, original shows, and um, Facebook Watch has a thing, and Apple has a thing. So all these things are out there. So there's a lot happening out there, and there's a lot of potential. So yeah, uh, the uh, the shop at Vet TV almost certainly would be a great candidate for that. It's a funny, funny show. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's got a distinction for itself. Uh, my character is more of a, I think a recurring guest star in that, uh, which again, I, I didn't care. I was happy to play a one day co-star on it cause it's so funny. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, you can do a lot of great things with the web series, uh, with the digital age, the streaming market's now opening up. Uh, it, there's a lot of different types of opportunity for filmmakers that wasn't there before. Wow. Merrick, you've shared so much with us. Is there anything else that we should discuss before we... Uh, oh, I think I was going to, because uh, I thought about the COVID-19. So what we're, yeah. what's happening with this shutdown that we're having now is the, uh, the expectation is that we may not be back in production until uh, the end of July. I'm sorry, the end of August or September. It could be as early as July, but they're looking at August to September for things being back up. That being said, uh, they're also anticipating it being a big, big change in how things are done for productions. Because now you've got to make sure that people are not infected with the virus. Uh, so you've got to do mitigation procedures there. You've got to do some social dis distancing procedures. Still, um, you'll need to do testing for every day of shooting and perhaps throughout the day of shooting. Um, you'll need to have the expense of having medical professionals on site um, it, it, the smaller things even, like having your production crew there, the production crew members have to have their own tools that only they use, they, there's no tool sharing. All these guidelines are being drawn up now, from what I understand, for what production is going to look like. So it's going to be just a different, a different thing. I mean, you can expect to spend an hour to an hour and a half um, before you even get to set when you check in for a production, before you even go see anyone else for hair or makeup or your trailer. You got to wait this waiting period of uh getting tested and, and checked out so yeah that's uh a lot of things are going to change but i still have faith that it'll be a um, a strong industry uh for sure uh and and now during the COVID 19 times you see a lot of commercials that are voiceover or they're doing things or they're shooting things at home so i'm seeing a lot of uh commercial opportunity for that where they say hey they want you to have you know, filming equipment at home. So actors that are looking to weather this for the next couple of months, if you have the resources, you might want to invest, and have something shipped to you that's a good camera or a good set of lighting or a good backdrop to have for yourself because a lot of people are hiring you based on whether or not you can accommodate uh, filming yourself at your own home. Um, so kind of uh, look into that as an investment. I, I think it's a good idea. Wow, very good. Thank you for that. So. Yeah, it sounds like sounds like you're you're prepared either way. You're pre <laughs> sounds like you're prepared either way. Sounds like you're uh, approaching it with the same mentality. Like, hey, look, I'm gonna be that. I'm gonna create that positive impact. I'm gonna be professional. I'm gonna be persistent. I'm gonna be creative. And uh, no matter what the climate, I'm gonna figure out a way to uh, increase my success within this industry. And that's. That's why we're on the call, man. I, I really appreciate you uh, taking the time out to uh, to do this podcast with me. Absolutely, man. Thanks for inviting me on. It's really great to, uh, to to be a part of this. And I certainly hope that, that it reaches out to people that are interested or actors that are looking for help or tips or just some kind of a motivation. I'm really hoping that we accomplish that much at least. Oh, without a doubt. I mean, look, I mean, if, if not, I got I got uh, front and back <laughs> notes right here. What are you writing? What is that? What are you writing there? Got your whole backstory. It's just. <laughs> it, okay. <laughs> see that? All right. All right. It's, just, okay. it's not necessarily, you know, it's not necessarily uh, the most, the most uh, neat format, but, you know, it's, uh, you, yeah, you, you, sh cool, you shared a lot. I mean, uh, I, I look forward to working with you at some point. I know we're going to be on set together. Yes. Yeah, I yeah I, I've had the fortune of being able to work with a lot of uh, people in SoCal area here, uh, San Diego area. So yeah, hopefully we certainly can. Perfect. Well, Merrick, thank you so much for joining me once again.
Absolutely. Thanks a lot, Joey.